going on YouTube? It's Pete coming in hot with another video. Also known as that guy, Pete. He just refused to invite the gatherings. And today, what we are here to discuss is this idea of mismatch cell. How, unlike the original incel video I made on how personal shortcomings could lead to incel them, how could society on a systemic level lead to incel them for people? And ultimately what the side effects of that are going to be. Um, so yeah, I mean, go again, uh, I did make a two part video in this uh, particular Black Pill Curriculum playlist, uh, the Incel Library, which did cover a majority of the Black Pill topics. So um, just going through the curriculum, um, we're almost done pretty much with everything there is to know about Black Pill. I mean, beyond this, it's just going to be semantics, um, details, little things. But I think we've covered most of the curriculum. So naturally, the Black Pill playlist is going to be shorter than the rest. So just be mindful of that. Okay. We're going to talk about um, what, uh, you know, mismatch cell is um, to some degree. We're going to talk about, um, you know, just some, uh, I don't want to say a disclaimer uh, type topics, but just some refresher stuff. There you go. Some refresher stuff. And then we're going to get into examples of um, mismatches that cause um, the advent of the mismatch cell. Someone who is in celibate as a result of this mismatch. And then ultimately, yeah, like I said, what the consequences are of that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started, right? When we talk about mismatch cell, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about an evolutionary mismatch. Now, as you know, I always like to say that Ooga Booga, you can't override it. You can only tame Ooga Booga. And uh, another term for this is is biological essentialism. It's this idea that there are certain aspects of who we are as humans that it's not a product of environment, which arguing that things are mostly a product of environment is social constructionism, right? Um, Mismatch Cell talks about things that are not socially constructed. They're not nurture. They're not a product of our environment. They're basically our nature, our ooga booga. Now, examples of this ooga booga, as a general rule, sans anomalies that mutate from the norm or are tamed. Um, that's something different. Examples are as follows. For example, one of the things we always talk about is that men look for beauty. Okay. They look for um, what's called a uh, neoteny, which is youthfulness, women with youth like features, and um, psychologically sound women who are not damaged, right? That's just, that's part of nature. Men generally look for this in women. Um, A second thing is dominance hierarchies. Men operating on meritocracy, right? Because it's the best model to get the best of the best to the top. The alphas and the sigmas followed by the betas, the deltas, the gammas, and the omegas. Um, You know, that just is what it is. Meritocracy is the model that works. Intrasexual competition for mates. That's inevitable. This is why we see mate guarding and mate poaching, right? I want you to think vasopressin and alpha imprint, respectively. Women are hypergamous and they seek masculine leaders in mates, which inevitably leads to a patriarchal system where female subordination is a thing. We have seen this throughout history and how shit tests run rampant when a man's ability to lead is in doubt. So you get the idea. These things are wired into us to optimize survival and reproductive success on the species-wide level. Whether or not what is best for the species is best for the individual, now that's up for debate. But natural selection selected for traits that offer the best chance of survival and reproduction, irrespective of whether or not said traits have a tangible benefit or if they're merely ornamentation, which we talked about in the genetics video I just did recently. Now, when you mix this inherent ooga booga with modern societal factors, you get the phenomenon of mismatch cell. Essentially, you can take the people out of ooga booga 
and put them in a modern civilization, but you can't take the ooga booga out of people. And that's what causes this mismatch. It causes issues in reproductive success. Unlike individual reasons for in seldom, such as height, ugliness, baldness, etc., mismatch cell covers ideas that are more systemic in principle. Progressivism may argue that this is a naturalist fallacy, implying the black pill space attaches positive connotation to natural phenomena. But I want to make clear here that we do not. It simply is. So let us go ahead and get into the examples. So the first example is the idea of arranged marriages versus free mate choice. Now, as we have gone over in many videos, a traditionally conservative regulated dating market, a form of nurture with arranged marriage being at one extreme of the spectrum versus a modernist deregulated market, which leads to fatalism, nihilism, and in seldom for sub fives, that's at the other extreme. Uh, what's the mismatch here? Well, as some of you are aware, arranged marriages were far more common in the past when considering royal lines, dowries, breeding contracts, etc. In short, the parents were more involved in the mate selection process for their offspring. So as you know, um, for daughters, fathers were more involved in mate selection and so on. Right, Social approval and disapproval played a bigger role in hunter-gatherer tribes, and as recent as medieval Europe, if you're talking Western society specifically, which is what we tend to cover on this channel. Over time, however, this has changed, and now individuals choose their mates in a vacuum, irrespective of what may or may not be best for them. And this causes a mismatch, where viable mates may simply become overlooked and invisible, and people who are not fit to be mates are being selected. Think, where have all the good men gone? The second example is related to the importance of a male space, like the manosphere, where men are free to discuss ideas as well as compete with one another intrasexually, as nature intended, via meritocracy. When you throw women into this mix, this intersexual competition is now less clear and the waters get murky. Feminism could be seen as a prime example of this phenomenon, and as a result, you are getting a drastic increase in the masculinization of women and the feminization of men. In short, the natural order is being disrupted and it is leading to inseldom for men who could not adapt and maintain masculinity. Remember, masculinity is one of the five things women look for, the other four being attraction, protection, provision, and character. If you're not masculine, from the perspective of having um, dating prospects, it's going to cost you. Naturally, there are incels as a result of this mismatch. The third example is affirmative action, right? This idea of forcing a level playing field between the genders and so on. As we know, hypergamy demands that a higher status man with more wealth is required in order to elevate his peers, including his mate and his children, by giving them a better life. But what happens when you have women achieving this higher status and wealth on their own, basically becoming their own beta bucks? Well, a lot of the men who do not thrive in the face of affirmative action get dominated in the social hierarchy, also known as getting mogged, which stems from a PUA term called AMOG, alpha male of the group getting mocked by women. This automatically disqualifies the man for a mating opportunity with her because he cannot meet her hypergamous needs and silence her hypergamous doubt. Women in this position would rather stay single than entertain a relationship with a subpar man in her eyes. They can live off the state system and thus do not need to go to the sexual or relationship marketplace to trade for resources. Instead, they just go to get sex, and that's it. This is, of course, um, a phenomenon that leads to in them for the women. Basically, they end up perpetually single as spinsters um, because they lack the modesty and femininity men seek in long-term mates and in seldom for the men who cannot outperform the women with this handicap. A fourth example of a mismatch 
is the absence of religion, aka atheism. Now, as an atheist myself, I have said this in other videos that many people cannot exercise nurture and discipline in the absence of faith. I said this, I think, in the religion video I did in the Red Pill curriculum playlist. Now, some do have the discipline, commitment, and willpower. But as we have seen, when you remove religion, tradition, stigmas, and norms, you get a society where birth rates are lower, the use of safety nets like birth control and abortion are on the rise, and only Chad reigns supreme. And slowly but surely, um, it's getting even more pronounced. Without nurture promoting procreation, incentivizing monogamy, and building a sense of community, individualism, which admittedly can have its merits, uh, it dominates the dating market. And the increasing occurrence of these results as the years pass illustrate this. Without nurture, a good chunk of men get cut out of the equation, which goes hand in hand with the sub-8 theory that we talked about recently. This trend we're moving towards as we speak where more and more men are getting cut out of the viable mating pool. Now, a fifth example is the effects of cohabitation and how it may lead to sexless marriages. As the saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. But husband cells occur when you do not give time to miss one another because routine is boring. This is especially so in a deregulated marketplace with no shortage of novelty talked about this i always mention that story where the husband ends up in a sexless marriage he goes out and buys a sex doll and now all of a sudden the wife wants to give it because absence makes the heart grow fonder it is what it is a sixth example is the concept of behavioral sync so it comes from um, an experiment done with rodents uh, and overcrowding i think um it was done by a British researcher. I don't remember his name. But put simply, when overpopulation occurs, people give a shit about each other less because there's more people and thus they're more inclined to engage in selfish and destructive behaviors. So that's a problem, obviously. It is literally a sinking society as a result of behavior. Think of how I always say on this channel that we've never been more integrated via technology as a society while simultaneously being more disconnected as humans. When you're disconnected as humans, you tend to be more destructive and reckless with your decisions because you don't really care about the collateral damage of your decisions, but you still expect the same outcomes as if you never did those things, which is where the disconnect happens that results in things like in shipdom or in seldom for some. The point is, people are less likely to think about survival of the species when the species is in your face 24-7, 365. As a result, people mate less, and by necessity, more incels crop up. A seventh example. It's the lack of responsibility you see from not having a stake in the outcome. Have you ever noticed how your parents have matters of wealth, inheritance, and estate planning in order? Current generations replace that with mounting debt instead living paycheck to paycheck, paying rent. These economic factors disincentivize people from starting families and mating for the purposes of anything other than pleasure, meaning chad or get the fuck out. As a result, you get more incels. And sub-8 theory starts to make more sense in terms of where we're going. An eighth example is the lack of intrasexual competition between men. When you have a comfortable society where everything is readily available in the first world, you get soft, feminine men and frustrated women who fill the power vacuum left by these men by getting more boss babe. Hypergamy prices them out, and only the most alpha get access. As a result, more incels. Again. So, yeah. When you have no stake in the outcome, this is what happens. You're not thinking about the future. You're just thinking about today, making sure you're taken care of until the day you die, and that's it. No future generations are even thought about. A ninth example is tied to environmentalism. We talked about this in the Green Pill video and how individuals are responding to climate change on a micro level. People have a very pessimistic outlook on the future of the human species, almost a defeatist mindset. When you have a mindset like that, you have people who see 
no point in investing in the future of humanity. Less long-term mate selection means chat or get the fuck out again for pleasure only. And that means more incels. A tenth example is the complete absence of enforced monogamy via social pressures and the late marriages that result. People not getting married until their late 20s or early 30s because of feminism, as well as economic and environmental factors, has led to a decade of CC writing for women becoming a trend. From the Family Studies Promiscuity Over Time chart, um, you noticed how you went from one in five women being a virgin to now one in five women easily clearing 10 plus sexual partners. And that trend is increasing. So it goes without saying that's going to have an impact, right? So when you're looking at that, you're also seeing this idea of the teleophilic delay, which put simply means people are losing their virginity, particularly men, later and later and later. And if men are losing their virginity at later ages, this means more incels. An 11th example is substituting community and tribalism for individualism. Tying into our 10th example that we just gave, when there is no coupling, loneliness increases because humans need connection. Couples are meeting online now, which we know is a Charlie Foxtrot all on its own when you're talking about online dating. If they're not meeting online, they're meeting in bars and clubs, which I tend to call the one night stand hunting grounds. Short-term relationships come from here, not long-term fulfilling ones. There has been a sharp decline in coupling through family, friends, work, and so on, aka vetted prospects. So the people that they're choosing are not vetted, and as a result, shitty mate selection choices for many is occurring, while introverts are becoming incelibate due to their shyness, commonly known as shy cells. You can't put introverts in unfamiliar territory and expect them to find mates. The twelfth and final example I have here is the lack of war. In the past, war was common. Men went out and fought to protect the women and children. Many died. And when men died, there were fewer men to go around. Now, in an age of relative peace, loosely speaking... We have a surplus of men. No matter what you do, some men will not get a mate. Naturally, and seldom ensues. So, those are pretty much the systemic things going on that contribute to and seldom versus the already individual problems that we have that contribute to and seldom for some. This is why ascension is so important. But... With all this stuff going on, what we're seeing is pretty significant effects on the male population. Without a stake, men are getting lazier. They're getting less productive. They lack that sense of belonging because we've gone from community to individualist. They don't feel as if they have a stake in society. They're lonely. They're depressed. They're anxious. They're prone to brain rot, which means that if you don't have active socialization with other humans your cognitive functions start to decay. And these guys are on edge, almost feral. If that weren't enough, single men generally have to pay more taxes to cover the cost of the tax breaks married couples get. In essence, they are forced to participate in a society that doesn't care about them nor want them in the sexual or romantic sense. How's that for a final insult? This is where the term wage slave comes from. And as we always say, unfortunately, some men either snap and lash out or they embrace fatalism and rope, which we are here to stop. That's one of the purposes of this channel. And we believe that understanding the issue is the first step to accepting it and enacting a solution. But you can understand why these systemic causes, as well as the results, um, it leads to a situation where you got a lot of these disenfranchised men who... You know, they're paying taxes and the taxes are funding all the government programs like welfare and Section 8 housing and food stamps that, as we see with the stats, single mothers consume a lot of those programs. Um, While married couples get tax breaks that single taxpayers don't. 
you got a lot of these guys that are alone involuntarily that are paying for the happiness of couples or paying for the safety nets of single mothers CC riding. And there is no reward for them. Not saying that they are owed anything. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is like, well, why would this man want to participate? And this is pretty much what we're dealing with. Okay. So as you can see, mismatch cell, a little bit different from all the other types of um, incels we talked about in the um, what does it mean to be involuntarily celibate video I did um, because this is more system wide. These are even more external factors versus the factors you're looking at in the mirror that determine why you're in celibate or things about you personally that determine why you're in celibate, psychologically speaking, culturally speaking, and so on. So that's pretty much all I've got on this topic. So relatively short topic compared to what I usually do. So feel free to leave a like, feel free to leave a dislike, call me an asshole, leave a comment. Pete, you're a dick because of X, Y, and Z. Whatever you do, don't report the video, though. It's good information. It helps people understand, and that prevents men from self-deleting, which is the main objective here, as well as providing a comprehensive Manosphere video library where you can access information whenever you need it. And if women have anything to gain from watching this stuff, I hope you uh, use it to your advantage to self-improve. Uh, that being said, if you like what you hear, and go ahead and hit subscribe. If you think I'm falling off and you are a subscriber, go ahead and unsubscribe. I'm not looking to get monetized. This channel is never going to make money. I'd have to make another channel about something completely uh, PC friendly if I were to ever make money on YouTube. But yeah, as always, I am that guy, Pete. You refuse to invite to gatherings. I'll definitely catch out for the next one. But for now, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace.